Hello everyone, this is Dean Phoenix and today I am going to be going over the toxicity mechanics and some of the key alchemy skills in The Witch 3. So many years ago when I started making Witch 3 videos I discovered something called skill switching and I used that in my Will Ren tank build before finding out that some of the, uh, well not finding out but playing around with some more of the skills and finding the different ways of using alchemy skills and the most powerful things. But one of the key distinctions that we went over in that video was uh, decoction toxicity versus potion toxicity, how it used to work and why you could use decoctions and heightened tolerance to uh, basically have potions on top of the decoctions if you wanted or you could use skill switching and change those skills out and just have decoction toxicity because decoction toxicity didn't used to hurt you. However, with the December 2022 patch, they have changed a lot of the mechanics uh, based on some of the mods that were made by fan content and it's rebalanced a lot of the skills and it's changed how the toxicity mechanics work as well and so it's made some things extremely powerful and it's led to a couple of things basically being tailed off a little bit and not being as effective as they were or some things being drastically nerfed and not being worth using so that being the case i wanted to go over some of the mechanics and the basics of how we use alchemy in the witcher 3 and what's changed so just going to go over that not going to spend a long time on the basics this is going to be more of an intermediate to advanced video so make sure you're familiar with the basics of the alchemy first because i'm only going to cover those very briefly so just to start just got viper and griffin gear and things like that his normal standard toxicity uh, will be 100 so you can see there there are a couple of skills that will boost that but if we take those off and we look at what his normal toxicity is going to be then it will always be 100 so 100 toxicity there you go and you can see there we've got toxicity offset and toxicity level so we're going to come back to those because those are the diff the differences between the distinction between toxicity from decoctions and toxicity from potions so Geralt has a hundred toxicity and you've basically got decoctions or potions that you can use with that so decoctions are now 50 toxicity they were previously 70 but they are 50 toxicity they last a long time so you can see that the duration is half an hour by default and they give like one fairly powerful boost, one bonus uh, relating to the actual decoction itself. Some of them are very, very good. A lot of them are still a little bit like luster or very specific uses. Um, so I don't generally use those, but some of them are quite good. Like troll decoction will heal a lot outside of combat. That one's quite useful. So those are decoctions. They last a long time and they will take up 50 toxicity. So if I was to use a decoction there, the Arrakast decoction got 50 toxicity. And as you can see on the right, the toxicity offset has gone up to 50. So that is decoction toxicity. And decoction toxicity, uh, if we check on the hood, when the hood is up, uh, da -da. If when you check on the toxicity, they have different colors. Um, so you'll be able to see the hood at the left, you can see has got that dark green 50 toxicity there. And that does not go down until the decoction ends. So this decoction is gonna last for half an hour by default. And that toxicity just stays there, dark green. And that is decoction toxicity. Now there are some skills that differentiate between that. Um, but one thing to realize is that now the toxicity threshold has been changed so previously it used to be 50% and you could increase it with heightened tolerance to be 100% but now that the skills some of the skills have been changed about and nerfed the maximum is 80% and one of the key changes that I wanted to make sure that we realize in this video is that decoction toxicity will now hurt you as well so if you were to have a second decoction so again this is just two decoctions and that is all toxicity offset which is your decoction toxicity you will start taking damage. So whereas previously, you didn't used to take any damage from purely decoction toxicity, which is why you could use skill switching effectively, you always will do. And you can see there that Geralt has now, is now taking damage, which you could only offset by healing it back uh, by other means. So that's very important to realize. There is no distinction between decoction toxicity and potion toxicity in terms of what hurts you now. It is purely based on the toxicity threshold. And like I say, the threshold was previously 100% with heightened tolerance, but now even if you've got three points in uh, heightened tolerance, the decoction threshold, the toxicity threshold, is always 80%. So it doesn't matter. If you're over 80%, then you will always be taking that damage until you add both potions and decoctions. So you see there we've meditated. This is on death march, so you don't get your health back when you meditate. 
but you do clear that toxicity and stop taking damage. So that is your decoction toxicity. Then we also have potion toxicity and potions are extremely powerful but last a lot shorter length of time. So the only one that lasts an extended duration uh, it really is the superior torneal, which if you apply it at night, so that's between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. So after 6 p.m. until you hit 6 a.m. Uh, that will last all night if it's the superior one, but normally they last a very short amount of time. So they're extremely po extremely powerful, more powerful than decoctions, but they only cost uh, 25 toxicity for most of the potions and they have extremely powerful shorter lasting effects. So you can see there that by default Swallow only lasts like 20 seconds and things like Blizzard, which is extremely strong, um, is the same thing. So that will uh, last 12 seconds, that one is immensely powerful. And this is the thing, the difference between the potions and the decoctions. Unless you're using certain skills, your potions will always just last a short amount of time and have very powerful effects. Um, and that's the, the key difference between decoctions that last a long time and have decent effects versus potions which are very very powerful but only last a short duration. And they have actually uh, changed all of the potions, just a very quick note, uh, the superior potions are now virtually all 25 points of, uh, of toxicity and uh, that includes superior white raffords which used to be 30. Um, so that's just a small thing to note. So again if we uh, compare the toxicity you can see that the light green toxicity and the dark green is the decoction toxicity. So you can still differentiate between those when you look at the toxicity bar. And also when you look here, you've got your total toxicity is 80, which is, you know, what causes the damage. But you can see you've got your toxicity offset, which is decoction toxicity and toxicity level, which is your potion toxicity. So a lot of the time you don't have to differentiate between them, but there are some skills where it does matter. And so we'll cover that in just a little bit. So if you want to imp increase your toxicity, um, one of the things that was extremely broken uh, was the mutation Euphoria, which is always the most powerful thing in pre-patch, pre 4.0, pre because you could use that acquired tolerance and a couple of other skills to boost your maximum toxicity level and toxicity uh, increases damage dealt by swords and sign intensity when using the euphoria mutation so these are the mutations from blood and wine so that's why euphoria was always king some of the others are a little lackluster so whilst euphoria hasn't actually changed itself it suffered a few key nerfs because there were changes to the uh, toxicity the things that boost your toxicity level and uh, that's why euphoria is still decent but it's not as godly as it used to be so because it was the second second alchemy mutation and it was by far the best it was better than all of these other ones even the ones that cost you like five and seven points to unlock and that's not necessarily the case although it is probably still this one of these stronger mutations the other alchemy ones you've got toxic blood that one's very lackluster but it's the first mutation so you wouldn't expect it to be good um it deals damage if you've got higher toxicity but it's a negligible amount of damage i tried building around that just for a sort of um, to try it out but it's not really usable. Uh, you've also got mutated skin, which when you have adrenaline points will decrease the damage received. Um, this is an interesting one because it's a multiplicative, uh, it was always a multiplicative reduction instead of additive. Uh, so it wasn't as powerful when you've already got a lot of resistance, it's not having as much of an effect. If you've got low resistance and then you, uh, you have three adrenaline points and mutated skin you'll notice much more of a difference so i'm going to do a build uh, looking at that but it's a decent ability you can do better things i feel uh, like my metamorphosis build and euphoria if you want but that's a decent one and then we've also got cat eyes which you can use alchemy slots with uh, that's actually the crossbow mutation so whilst it, it does have allowed the use of combat and alchemy skills it's not really an alchemy mutation but the best one now i feel is uh, is metamorphosis so i'll come back to metamorphosis because it has some key mechanics that will make more sense after uh, we've discussed some of the other things there will be timestamps in this video i will sort them out after i've done the video and uh, just so that you can skip to the part that you want to be checking up on because this is going to be a lot of information it's going to be a long one so we'll split it up into jumps so one of the things that you need to uh, realize now is that the max limit has changed so the max limit uh, you used to be able to get this skill which is a key one for alchemy builds which is acquired tolerance 
So acquire tolerance for every level one, two, or three alchemy formula you know, not that you have made, like you don't have to have made the bomb, made the potions, you just have to know the formulas to have either found them in the world, looted them from chests, or bought them. Acquired tolerance will now increase your maximum toxicity by half a point instead of one point. So this was the major nerf to Euphoria. Uh, because previously you could get like 297 toxicity even before taking into account gear with various things but uh, that is not the case any longer and so now when you apply acquired tolerance the maximum that you can have is 184 toxicity so that is 184 and that's with knowing uh, everything for the bombs the potions all of this stuff so you have to know all the bombs potions decoctions recipes and also the quest ones so there are some like cleansing mixture is from hearts and hearts of stone Reynolds filter is from the new forgotten woven set uh, bonus shell bar bait is one that uh, virtually always miss, people will always miss and that's from the 2-4 monster contract so if you have all of these and you know all the rest you will have 184 toxicity with Eufor uh, with euphoria and acquired tolerance so euphoria doesn't affect that it's acquired tolerance really but it is just acquired tolerance but important to know 184 is the max the other things that you can do to increase that there are a couple of gear sets that work with um, the toxicity mechanics as well and we'll just cover those one of the other things is metabolic control now this is a general skill and that just gives a flat toxicity of 30 points so not really uh, necessary at all unless you're using euphoria in which case it gives you that bit of like 22 percent extra damage and sign intensity as, as a maximum but that can increase it as well so that can take you up to 214. The other thing that you can do is you can use the manticore set and each piece of the manticore set uh, gives you five toxicity so you can see there on the right plus five toxicity for having the manticore armor this is the same now for the legendary one from new game plus and the regular manticore armor from a first playthrough and if you have all five pieces of that all five pieces are maximum toxicity plus five and so for those of you quick at maths or even basic maths that's plus 20. So you can see that with the Manticore gear, Metabolic Control and Acquired Tolerance, you get 234 max. And uh, the key thresholds to hit here, uh, the ones to keep note of, are if decoctions are 50 toxicity per decoction, then that is 200. So you can hit 200 toxicity, yeah? um, and you can have enough toxicity to do that by either having Acquired Tolerance and Metabolic Control, or some of the manticore gear so you can still hit 204 with all the pieces of the manticore gear the swords don't give a bonus it's just the regular four pieces of armor um, but if you have that then you can get 204 toxicity there so uh, just to just to make you aware that, that is is a possibility you can have four decoctions from either having acquired tolerance in them all all parts of the manticore gear or acquired tolerance and metabolic control but that takes up a slot of your abilities so very important to just be aware of those distinctions the other key threshold and one that i used in my euphoria build uh, if you've watched that video was to have enough of the pieces of manticore gear so that on top of acquired tolerance and metabolic control you can hit a threshold uh, that will allow you to use four decoctions which we've got here so we've still got the four decoctions but we, we've three pieces of the manticore gear and metabolic control you can hit 229 and that's very good because that lets you have 25 points to have four decoctions as you can see there we've got echidna fiend arakas ekamara just use four random ones but you can also use a superior potion on top so although these superior potions don't last very long you can see that we have got one on top of the four decoctions and that is very good because it is taking um allowing us to use four decoctions and a potion on top so that's it for your sort of overview of the mutations and the toxicity mechanics so i just wanted to go over uh, the the tree so for all of the skills in the alchemy tree and a couple of the general ones that affect it just going to cover some of the key ones and um, that i use a lot in builds and some of the things that i get asked a lot because there are some things that are very crucial so one of the things that we want to look at is the uh one of the skills where it says about potion effects here potion effects don't wear off until potion toxicity falls to 55 percent of the maximum level and that was with three points in delayed recovery i feel like after the patch 4.0 this is the most powerful skill in the game it's definitely one of them um 
up there with Synergy. Uh, so I'm gonna cover some of the key skills and delayed recovery is one of them. So delayed recovery is one where it's very important to look at the difference between potion toxicity and decoction toxicity. So based on potion toxicity, and that is why um, it's very important to understand that distinction. So uh, usually you would have, uh, say we've got Superior Blizzard, Superior Swallow, Superior Tornio. We've got all of those active and uh, we can just pile on those there. So if we are looking at, let's uh, just switch up the armor set so we don't have the Manticore and I can show it you with the basic set. Okay, so uh, in fact, we're just gonna use these regular swords. There we go. And uh, we'll go back to the regular armors. So if you are using a regular set of armor that doesn't affect anything potion wise, now we've got 69 toxicity, nice. And you can just see that that is over 55% of the total. So when we look at delay recovery, it is talking about having 55% of your total max toxicity being taken up by potion toxicity. So that's toxicity level. And that's where the distinction is very important. So you've got to have that light green potion toxicity be 55% or more of your total in order for delayed recovery to stay active. And that's that's where you need to be recognizing that distinction. So you can see here, we've got Blizzard, uh, which is only active for eight seconds and Swallow is only going to be active for about, uh, you know, the 20 seconds at its max. So you can see there that when the blizzard runs out even though it's at zero delayed recovery keeps it active and so as long as you keep that green toxicity as more than 55 of your total which uh, when we're at 100 toxicity is just 55 toxicity you'll see that blizzard remains active and now swallow is doing the same so even though they should have run out they stay active now blizzard is ex superior blizzard is a supremely powerful it's when you're in danger which is pretty much always in combat it applies a 40 percent slowdown and when you've got three adrenaline points it allows you pretty much infinite stamina because actions that use stamina don't actually reduce your yellow stamina bar as you can see just there so whilst your potion toxicity remains above 55 they remain active but as you saw there as soon as I drop below 55 toxicity, so as soon as you hit 54 toxicity out of the 100, those potions stop being active. So that's why delayed recovery can be extremely powerful because you can keep these really strong potions as active. But it's very important to recognize that it's only potion toxicity so that affects those. So you can see there, Tony Owl is just about to run out, but if I make sure that the toxicity goes up again, Tony Owl stays active but um, that's that's a really important thing and what you what you need with uh, the three potions that I always recommend using first with the delayed recovery are superior swallow superior blizzard and most often superior maribor um, but it's these two really superior swallow and superior blizzard that you want to be using first and that's because superior swallow is only supposed to last that 20 seconds but it gives you a massive amount of healing so you can see there I don't have the toxicity to use it uh, when I've used the other potions uh, but if you use superior swallow then it's giving you that massive amount of healing but if you keep your potion toxicity it massively out heals the damage you take from your toxicity damage so that's why uh, delayed recovery is just a supremely powerful ability but the reason I wanted to stress um, how it how its mechanics works is that you can basically make sure that you are always having that potion toxicity be high, uh, higher than 50%, but it is 55% of your maximum and it only applies to potion toxicity. And what I mean by this is, let's say uh, we have acquired tolerance and so we've got acquired tolerance there with nothing else. So we have 184 toxicity. So now we no longer just need to be having that 55 toxicity. So if I apply a 55, uh, if I apply a over 55 toxicity, you'll see that um, we've got the toxicity applied there but blizzard will still run out as soon as it runs out as you'll see here it will stop working and that's because delayed recovery is not active because it's not 55 percent of the potion toxicity with me so far i hope so so if you were to look at the actual um total toxicity we're just going to do some quick maths here i will put this up on the screen after i have done uh, when i'm doing the actual video but if you look at your toxicity if it's 184 
then 55% of that is 102 toxicity. Uh, I believe it rounds up, so I don't know. But yeah, so if you're at 184 toxicity, then 55% is, is 102. So that means for delayed recovery to be active when you've got your toxicity uh, with acquired tolerance being 184, you would have to keep over 102 toxicity of that toxicity in order for delayed recovery to be active. And that's why you don't necessarily need acquired tolerance with delayed recovery, but the more toxicity you have, the easier it is to keep up. So as you can see here, we've just used a load of potions. We are over 102 toxicity. So our potion toxicity is over 102. And that means that 55% of the total toxicity is being taken up by potion toxicity. And when Blizzard runs out there, you will see that delayed recovery will kick in and as long as you keep that potion toxicity above 102 of the total then these really powerful potions will stay on. This is why de delayed recovery is fantastically powerful and why uh, acquired tolerance is still good with it even though you don't necessarily need it. You could just use 55 to potion toxicity out of 100 and every time it drops down just keep using potions but you have to stay on top of that a lot more You and it, it's uh, a lot easier to sort of lose track of the toxicity in battle or even when you're just running around between fights and things. So that's why acquired tolerance is good for using with delayed recovery. It gives you more leeway and that's very good. But what you can do is you can just keep piling on those potions and as long as you keep it topped up, you get everything active all the time. Swallow stays active and counter counteracts that toxicity from uh, the damage that you would otherwise be taking and that's why delayed recovery is superbly powerful. Now what it does mean is that because it's relating to potion toxicity, if you want, you can apply up to one manual decoction if you've got acquired tolerance. So you need to keep the potion toxicity over 128 and I'll show you again how this works. So let's say you wanted to have the Ekimaru decoction. So now we have got 50 toxicity offset, which is, is your decoction toxicity. And so we'd still need to have over 128 um, for your 128 potion toxicity for delayed recovery to be active. Uh, again, you can very easily see this. Let's say that I just uh, apply the, the potion toxicity there. So now we're at 60% toxicity, bottom right of the screen. So 60% total toxicity. But 50 of it is toxicity offset and 60 of it is toxicity level. So our toxicity level, the potion toxicity, is about 33%. It's roughly a third. Of, uh, so 60 would be a, a third of 180, obviously. Um, and you can see that um, when Swallow runs out, it will actually stop working because delayed recovery is not active because even though you're over 60% of your total toxicity, because it's not 55% uh, of it being taken up by potion toxicity only, because that's all that delayed recovery looks at, Swallow will run out. And this is why if you use a manual decoction, you will have less leeway for that as well. So there we go. You can see that, that um, Swallow ran out there. But if we were then to get our potion toxicity as being uh, that toxicity level as being over 128 again, uh, over 102, beg your pardon, um, you will see uh, that the potions will instead carry on working. So because the light green portion of that total toxicity bar is over 55%, uh, then delayed recovery will remain active. Now, one of the other things that's very important with this is for the metamorphosis decoction uh, decoctions. So, and it's because it can trigger up to five decoctions with no toxicity cost. So this is really fun because it means that you can uh, trigger decoctions uh, without, whilst also using the potions. And so you can have up to five decoctions. And as somebody told me in the comments, can't remember who, so beg your pardon. But somebody let me know that uh, applying Axion Roach uh, should trigger the decoctions, which I haven't actually tried. That well, let's have a let's have a try. Oh dear. Uh, right. So let's have a look. We need to cast Axion Roach, which I can't remember how you do it. Do do do. Now now. There you go. Right, so you can see there that you applied Axie and that applied um, Axie to Roach and that applied five decoctions at random from Metamorphosis. And the reason that this is very good um, is because it applies them for two minutes. But what you can do is, uh, for some reason, the decoctions when they're applied by the decoctions when they're applied by Metamorphosis will count as potions for delayed recovery. So as you're probably, uh, you know, already understanding, that's extremely powerful. So uh, yeah, I'll just leave that running for a little bit, but 
basically when these decoctions run out so in a minute 24 that relievers decoction will run out um, but as long as you keep the potion toxicity over 55 percent of that total which i believe we said was 102 when you've got 184 total disco uh, toxicity these decoctions will actually carry on running as well now that means that um there are this is a part of the misinformation that gets put out there quite a lot like i've seen uh, metamorphosis builds being done that have prolongation and all ridiculous things like that and it's because people just don't understand the mechanics so that's why i'm trying to do this video um, you do not need things like prolongation if you've got um, anything which pr is the enchantment that where if you strike a blow it increases the length of time that potions will last and you don't need that with delayed recovery and delayed recovery will actually affect the decoctions that have been triggered by metamorphosis so that's very good to know and that's why metamorphosis is so powerful now there are a lot of decoctions and some of them are quite lackluster but one of the things you can do is you can just drop the ones that you don't want to use so uh, let's say you are going to uh, drop a few of these uh, then you can basically just it will only pick from the ones that you are actually uh, wanting to have in your inventory so that's very important uh, so it's important to know that if you're using a metamorphosis build and you want to co commit to it fully you would only be using certain ones like I will always favor the Aracast decoction, the Ekimaru decoction and things like that. So that is again very important uh, to recognize and uh, basically you would either drop the decoctions which destroys them entirely or you can sell them to Hugo into Sam. So I'll do a little clip of that a bit later in the video and cover that. But bear in mind that if you're wanting to commit fully to that metamorphosis build, if you drop the potions, uh, the decoctions, beg your pardon, if you d drop the ones that you don't want to use, it destroys them entirely. Dropping this item will destroy it. And in order to get that back, you would then um, need to craft it afresh. And that means that you would need all of the parts of it available and the thing that's very important to realize with that is it means that if you wanted to remake something you would actually need to have the mutagen as well so some of those you can see i've only got three water tag mutagens so some of them are quite rare and some of them are unique so if you're going to commit to that you have to be really careful so especially the succubus decoction and the doppler decoction which you only get like one or two chances to get the doppler decoction you literally only get one chance per game the succubus decoction you only get two chances per playthrough and it me means making a specific decision in a specific quest. So if you're going to drop decoctions so that Metamorphosis cannot pick them, be very careful with that. I will show a little clip uh, at the end of the video about how you can sell them to Hugo, and I believe they stay in Hugo's inventory. Um, so that's something to bear in mind there. Okay, so that's a lot of information so far, but there is more that we want to go over. So what are the um, alternatives for delayed recovery? So delayed recovery is very powerful, but it's quite a high maintenance sort of option. So one of the alternatives is to instead use fast metabolism. And uh, fast metabolism is a bit different because what fast metabolism does is it makes the toxicity drop three points per second faster. So this is very good because this only applies to potion toxicity again. So again, there's that distinction between potion toxicity and decoction toxicity. But what you can do with this is you can have enough uh, toxicity to use the four decoctions if you are using the manticore gear. So let's put some of that manticore gear back on. Okay, and this is what we discussed earlier. You have the 200 toxicity there and uh, that allows you to use four decoctions okay so let's say you want to use those four decoctions but what you can do is is having three pieces of the manticore gear and then having acquired tolerance and metabolic control will give you enough toxicity to use four decoctions and having that 200 uh, having at least 25 toxicity spare so again just to sort of summarize that is acquired tolerance and metabolic control and three pieces of manticore gear at least and that will give you enough toxicity to use the potions on top of decoctions and why this is important is you can use four decoctions manually so they last a long time like that but fast metabolism makes a huge difference for um how quickly the green toxicity goes down there so you can see the decoction toxicity remains unchanged but the light green toxicity goes down extremely quickly so that means that uh, you can use the superior potions on top of four decoctions and this is uh, one of the options that i had for how your alchemy can be set up on a euphoria build or something like that where you want to use manual decoctions and this takes less maintenance because 
you can just use the four decoctions and then you can just use the potions as and when so this is a good mid ground where you don't have to watch your toxicity as much but if you want to just pop a superior blizzard or a superior swallow or something like that in combat then you can do bear in mind that superior tawny owl will last all night so if you have these four decoctions and then use superior tawny owl after 6 p.m superior tawny owl will carry on running even after it's potion toxicity has run out so you can use these other potions on top of it and that's very useful as well a very quick note you can use skill switching and so uh, skill switching still works it's less effective um, compared to how it was previously but if you wanted to do it you can do so skill switching is basically you get acquired tolerance and or metabolic control and then what that gives you is uh, you have the toxicity here but if you're going to use the skill switching after patch 4.0, so in the current version of the game, you would always want to use troll decoction because the whole point is to use um, enough decoctions so that you're having those active and then remove the top, the skills afterwards. So let's say we went with Arakas, Ekimara, troll decoction and succubus. So we are actually taking damage, but troll decoction heals a lot outside of combat. So outside of combat, you would still um, be healing more than the toxicity damage that you are taking so this is why you can make use of uh, skill switching as long as you have the troll decoction and what that does is it allows you to apply that toxicity so you can see here we will have the uh, 200 toxicity like so so we've got the uh, over 200 toxicity there so you could do this without the manticore gear i'll just show um let's just take off the manticore gear and because you've got 214 toxicity with acquired tolerance and metabolic control you can apply those four decoctions and then what you can do is you can take those skills out so then you could put other skills there in their place so let's say you wanted to use something else like you wanted to use uh, you know uh, other skills in their place you could swap these two skills in your build and you would still have the decoctions active. So now we've got 200% toxicity, which is mathematically impossible, but we've got 200 decoction toxicity and we've taken those skills off, but the decoctions remain active. And because one of them is troll decoction, it's still healing us, even though we would be taking damage without the troll decoction being active. So that's how you can use skill switching. It's less useful now though, because bearing in mind, you will always be taking damage from the toxicity and water hag and invigoration do not work when you are taking damage. And so that is why um, it's less useful because previously decoction toxicity didn't hurt you, which is why you could use things like water hag decoction and then do skill switching. And because it was purely decoction toxicity that didn't used to hurt you, now it does. And so it's less useful and uh, that is another key thing that I wanted to show and so that is what we're going to cover next so basically the damage that you are taking right uh, counts as damage done and what you see people say a lot of the time is oh you can heal it back and you can still use water hag and invigoration so invigoration is an enchantment on the sword which any overhealing so if you're at full health and you heal it converts some of that to damage and um, one of the decoctions is the water hag decoction and the water hag decoction provides a boost to your attack power and was always a staple on all of my builds um, previously because it was very strong so here if you look at the water hag decoction 50 percent increased damage when vitality is, a, is at its maximum okay and so here we've got our 100 toxicity you can see our damage so 2719 and 4983 we're looking at the strong attack critical hit damage and the silver sword fast attack critical hit damage so if you look at those and then you apply the water hag decoction you can see those increases straight away 3306 6059 quite a big increase and that's why it was always a staple just for using one decoction that's quite a significant attack increase but the problem with the water hag decoction now is that when you are over this toxicity threshold which is now 80 percent at a maximum so even if you have high intolerance, okay, um, it still damages you and you will see why this is so crucial. So let me see, we have got that, uh, we've got the active water hag decoction and we've got swallow, okay. So this is with height and tolerance. So because we're below 80%, water hag is still active, fine and dandy. Now the problem comes uh, when you go over uh, that 80%. Now previously, with height and tolerance you could have the maximum be 100% so it didn't matter how much toxicity you were applying okay so if you look at it here you can see that as soon as we go over that 80% water hag is no longer active the damage just goes back to normal now 
this is one of the things that frustrates me immensely when people are doing their builds is they will always have like what hang on oh it's just working you can see it not working people come on so even though we are healing more with swallow we've got that huge uh, vitality uh, regen that we're getting but it will never be maximum it will always be one or two points shy of your maximum and it doesn't matter whatever you use or however you try and heal it always counts you as being less than full health and because it counts you as being less than full health, invigoration will not trigger. So you can see the vitality looks like it's full because Swallow is healing more than I am taking damage with toxicity. Same for Troll Decoction, same for Ekimara if you're dealing damage, things like that. But it never counts you as being full health. So if you're losing toxicity damage, doesn't matter how much you're healing, you will always be what, at least one or two points short and therefore water hag will never be active and invigoration will never be active so if you're going to use one of those mutations you have to have a build that centers around not only staying above um staying below 80 percent toxicity but that's only if you have got heightened tolerance and so if you think about it in terms of using euphoria which is what the old builds used to revolve around it used to have water hag decoction for the 50 percent bonus damage and it used to have euphoria and they would synergize extremely well as long as you weren't taking toxicity damage but now you are always taking toxicity damage so you have to keep your toxicity below 80 percent of the maximum and have that slot for height and tolerance it's just not worth it in my opinion for although it's a decent boost it's not it's not as much of a boost as you would think so you'd be better maybe using this succubus decoction in my builds i actually recommend things that are better for utility like i much prefer having the aracast decoction for some uh, extra defense or anything like that and that's why i never very rarely recommend war tag in any of my builds and why if you're watching somebody else put them in their build videos as they always do you should roll your eyes and get frustrated like i do Maybe not get frustrated, maybe react differently, but that is why it is not worth using. So a couple of the other key things that I'm going to go over, um, just very briefly. Refreshment, decent skill, uh, each potion dose imbibed heals 30% of your maximum when you've got three points. Uh, that is just relating to potions, not decoctions, makes more sense. That's uh, only really worth using with fast metabolism in my opinion, but it's worth mentioning. Protective coating is extremely good, uh, even though it's 15% instead of 25% now. It's uh, still a fantastic skill. And the way that protective coating works is um, it's, say you had 50% resistance from your armor. This just adds 15% onto that for all damage type, 15% damage reduction on for all types. So uh, that is what we call additive, not multiplicative. So multiplicative would be you have 50% resistance and then applying this 15% would be one point, you would times that 50% figure by 1.15 which would come out at uh, less than at that exact 15% boost. Um, so I might explain that a little bit more, but it's boring math, so maybe not. Um, but yeah, so that's a straight 15% added on, and that's why it's very, very good. Uh, tissue, trans tissue transmutation adds 900 vitality for each decoction. Um, that also applies to the ones that are applied from metamorphosis. So that's a decent skill with metamorphosis. Endure pain, we never used to use because you always wanted to have um, the toxicity threshold be 100% prior to patch 4.0. But now we don't. Now we uh, will often deliberately be having high toxicity and just counteracting the damage that we're taking from toxicity by having something like superior swallow being active all the time and delayed recovery. So this can actually uh, endure pain is actually quite useful. I had it as one of the options on my metamorphosis build. And so that's a good one to bear in mind now because you're often going to deliberately be over the threshold for toxicity, taking that damage and then uh, deliberately healing it back and so getting a 30% vitality boost can be quite useful especially on deathmatch and especially if you're not using a defensive type of build so if you want to go out all our offense having that vitality can help you survive a hit even though enemies do a lot of damage on deathmatch synergy is one of the absolute best skills i'm just going to mention it very quickly what it does is um, you can increase the amount of uh, the boost that you get from these mutagens so you can see here normally a mutagen will be 10 percent synergy increases that by 50 percent so uh, you can put that in there and you can see synergy why is it not showing me the descriptions there we go right synergy increases the bonus for a mutagen placed by 50 percent and so that's very good because if you um get that with some red skills <coughs> excuse me if you put that with some uh, red skills here, you can see that each time you boost the mutagen, um, the synergy bonus applies to that. 
So here you've got your red mutagen and that is being boosted by 10% for each one of these red skills. And then synergy increases the whole thing by 50%. So it jumps from 40 to 60 and that's why synergy is an absolutely amazing skill. Does the same thing with blue skills and your sign intensity if you have uh, the greater and blues. Uh, and it does the same thing with vitality if you have greater greens but vitality there are better ways of boosting it but that is why synergy will virtually be always on every decent build. I love that skill. It's still extremely powerful and remains identical after the 4.0 update. Couple of other key things, uh, there were changes to the fixative skill, so blade oils do not wear off and up to three different oils can be applied. That one's very good as a quality of life because, um, as we're going to come on to, uh, there are a few different skills that are very, very good now um, with oils, including protective coating but also hunter instinct. And it's very good because your steel sword, uh, you only ever have two types of oil on anyway, so you can only apply the uh, humans and non-humans superior hammer and venom or for beasts superior beast oil those are the only two oils you can apply to your steel sword so you're always going to be wanting to have those two oils on and so that means that you never have to worry about changing your oils on your steel sword when you have fixative that's very convenient also you'll find that in a lot of places you're gonna have like quite uh, specific types of enemies or you'll run into the same enemies over and over again. And so it's very useful to be able to have three on your silver sword as well. I really like this skill now. I didn't used to think it was really worth it unless you were in the Nilfgaard camp or something. But um, it, I do feel like it's a good skill, not just for quality of life, but just because there's so much to keep track of in combat, it can be very useful to not have to worry about your oils running out and to have those different types. And so if there's a place with a lot of wraiths, you could have spectre oil, uh, or you could have your necrophages, insectoids, vampires. Like if you're in uh, Tucson, you'll run into those types of enemies quite often. So I do find fixative to be quite useful. Not always essential on a build, but just useful nonetheless and a good one to have. Hunter Instinct did not used to work, so uh, now it is fixed, and so this adds a 100% uh, critical hit damage against the targeted enemy type, and the targeted enemy type, this being in the oil tree, oil preparation tree, the last skill in that, targeted means if you are hitting the type of enemy with the correct oil applied on your sword, and this is why it synergizes very well with fixative, but Hunter Instinct's very strong if you're doing critical hits. So a lot of my builds, the powerful ones that are deliberately OP, revolve around having Killing Spree and uh, Hunter Instinct to deliberately get those critical hits as often as possible. And that's why the oils are very powerful and why you need to consider those for the build. So Hunter Instinct is extremely good now. So we have that. And then Killing Spree, as I mentioned, this is the bottom of the Trial of the Grasses tree. And this has been nerfed, but is still very powerful. Used to add 100% critical hit chance for each opponent killed, now it's 30%. So this is only having an effect um, in battles where you've got multiple opponents. So if you're fighting a single opponent, it's not doing anything because by the time you get a kill, the fight's over. You've killed the only opponent. But it's very good versus mobs, groups of enemies, particularly things like wolves, vampires, foglets that you'll often uh, drown as, neckers, things that you fight in big groups. Once you get a kill or two, that 30% is a big chance. So even though it's not 100% chance, if you say you've already got like 30% chance of on your of getting a critical hit on your build, you kill one enemy that goes to 60, you're going to be doing a critical hit the next hit at least like half the time. So effectively you're critting very often. You hit kill two enemies, it's virtually guaranteed. And obviously that's very useful against humans because you get big groups of humans in large portions of the game, and bandit camps and things like that as well. And a lot of the missions will have specific types of enemies in big groups. So Killing Spree is extremely good, um, especially when combined with Hunter Instinct. You will often get those uh, critical hits. Because it only triggers after a kill though, an alternative is you can use one point on the general skill Battle Frenzy. And uh, Battle Frenzy is an interesting one. Battle Trance, which is your adrenaline power, um, instead of that previous effect, adrenaline gives 10% uh, damage increase for your sword damage per adrenaline point, maximum of three, or and it also gives a 5% sign boost uh, per adrenaline point. But now you can change it so that it increases critical hit chance by 8% per adrenaline point. So you would lose 30% of your base damage 
Um, so it's not 30% of your total damage, it's just 30% of whatever your base sword damage is. But it is still a significant loss, but um, to have the chance to do 24% extra critical hit chance against a single opponent, that can be very good. So one of the uh, things that is very good to consider there is if you're fighting uh, an enemy, like a, you know that a boss is coming up, for example the Olgird fight, if you choose to fight Olgird, um, that is a protracted and really fun fight, uh, or maybe Detlaf if you're fighting Detlaf. Um, but there you'd be using Arendite. But anyway, particularly if you're fighting a solo enemy and you're using your Steel Sword, because you then you wouldn't be using Arendite in New Game Plus, uh, because Arendite will give critical hits when it's at 10 charges. If you're fighting a Steel Sword enemy, you wouldn't have that bonus. So if you know that you've got a Steel Sword solo enemy and it's going to be a longish fight, you can consider swapping a Killing Spree out for Battle Frenzy and you can just use like one extra point to have Battle Frenzy and you can consider using that instead just for that fight and then change it back afterwards. So that's something to bear in mind. The only other general skill that I really want to mention is Metabolism Boosts. So metabolism boosts, if available, adrenaline points will be consumed to reduce the toxicity cost of drinking potions by 33% per point. Right, that seems uh, like it would be very good, just because uh, it, if you didn't want to go heavy on an alchemy build, this is a good skill to consider. But bearing in mind that that description was consume adrenaline points, it's actually bugged and it doesn't work like that, which is very cool. So uh, I'm just going to show a quick trick here. Uh, there are a couple of ways to get adrenaline outside of battle. Um, so if you really want to get your adrenaline outside of battle, the way I normally do it is just to have um, Razor Focus, which is a skill from the Red Tree, which will give you an adrenaline point at the start of battle. And then you can use Superior Maribor Forest, which will give you an adrenaline point after that as well. So if you don't have Superior Maribor active, you go into battle and you will get uh, one point from Razor Focus. And then you can instantly use Superior Maribor Forest and that will give you an adrenaline point. So you would have two. Outside of battle though, uh, the ways you can do it are, if you wanted, you can use Superior Maribor Forest, then use a Superior White Honey to clear your toxicity and the potion, and then use another Superior Maribor Forest, and that gives you uh, the adrenaline point again. Superior White Honey, which clears it out, and there you go, so you've nothing active there, and then use it again. So you can get adrenaline points outside of battle that way, but it's obviously very intensive for your potions you'd have to meditate to get back to your full amount of superior maribor forest after that but anyway uh, that being the case so we've got the three adrenaline points now um, and that means that uh, what should happen is that you use a potion so it doesn't apply to decoctions it specifically says that but you should be able to use a potion that will consume uh, the toxicity cost of drink it will uh, consume adrenaline points but it doesn't actually consume them and uh, this is why it's kind of cool so like there use superior toenail that should have that cost zero toxicity and it should have taken all three of my adrenaline points but it didn't because the skills bugged um, so this is a good little option that you can have if you've got a build that focuses around adrenaline getting that up high quickly uh, you can very easily use uh, a ton of potions without it adding to your toxicity cost. So it's like a, a sort of ghetto fast metabolism. Fast metabolism is, is usually better um, if you are... Basically, fast metabolism, metabolism is usually better um, because it is a green skill instead of a general skill. So it can either boost a green mutagen if you have a green mutagen adjacent to it, uh, or more importantly, it gives your potion duration time and bomb damage a bit of a 15% boost because it's a green skill instead of a brown skill. But if you didn't want to put all of these points in the alchemy tree, if you don't often use alchemy and you don't want to focus on it, you just want to use the odd potion here and there or pile on some for particularly difficult fights. If you uh, have a build that's focused around adrenaline, metabolism boost can be useful for that. Just a quick thing that you have to realize though, uh, is that you do have to have the maximum amount of the toxicity available in order to be able to use the potion. And what I mean by that is, I think we have the 100 toxicity here. So let's have a look. Uh, yeah, so we've got 100 toxicity here, right? So <clears throat> let's say that um, I had a decoction and the basilisk decoction. Where's basilisk? Basilisk is the only decoction that costs um, 40 points. So I just need to find that so I can use it. Where is it? It's blue. Where are you basilisk? Um, yeah, so the, what, the thing that I was going to say is that um, you have to basically, is that basilisk? 
Yeah, right, so basically you can see there, you have to have the toxicity available even though it's not gonna use it up. So that's like another sort of bugged aspect of the skill. Um, I would have expected that it lets you use it. But you see how you cannot do that now. Current toxicity is 92 out of 100. So even though using this potion will not take up any toxicity, I still can't do it unless I have that maximum toxicity available. So I would need 25 toxicity available to use any of these superior potions, even though they're only gonna cost zero. And that's why it's not a fantastic skill um, and why you wouldn't necessarily be using metabolism boost over anything else. So just bear that in mind. That's why I don't use metabolism boost over anything else um, a lot of the time. It's better to just use fast metabolism or more likely for myself, delayed recovery, because that is, in my opinion, the most powerful one in the game. A couple of other things that I just want to very quickly go over. So we're just going to meditate and take off metabolism boost again. Um, I was hoping that, sign, uh, that side effects and adaptation would be buffed in some way, um, but sadly they have not been. So uh, I still don't like side effects uh, and I'll show you why in just a moment. So let's take off the metabolism boost. So side effects is the uh, one of the other end skills in the brewing tree and it sounds really good imbibing a potion gives a hundred percent chance of activating the effects of another randomly selected potion that sounds great you'd use five potions it instead uses 10 you could have all your potions used all the time would synergize fantastically with fast metabolism or with a delayed recovery if you didn't want to use that with acquired tolerance the problem is is you apply the one that's great it's applied the blizzard and it gives me superior full moon as well that's really cool but it only does it for one potion at a time so if you apply other potions apply two more potions there and side effects didn't kick in it only applies the one so until blizzard runs out and I think the superior full moon that it's applied extra until they run out uh, side effects won't trigger again so it's just too slow you can use more potions a lot quicker just by either having delayed recovery and just keeping those stacked up and having more and more of the extremely powerful potions over time particularly if you want uh, acquired tolerance it's better to have either acquired tolerance and delayed recovery or to have fast metabolism and acquired tolerance and have potions on top of um, the decoction toxicity that works out as using a lot more potions than side effects does because side effects can only be one potion at a time again this is why when I see it in other people's builds it infuriates me because you've clearly not tested how it's working the last one that's a bit disappointing and hasn't been changed is adaptation so this is the end of the mutation tree after synergy you'd think it would be amazing but sadly it is not so if we put on uh, adaptation it extends the effective duration of all mutagen decoctions by 100% that is a pure quality of life thing because the mutations last ages anyway if you wanted the metamorphosis decoctions to last longer um, then you would use delayed recovery because that makes them last indefinitely as long as you keep the potion toxicity up as we said before so uh, it, it doesn't really matter that your decoctions are lasting a long time because they last an incredibly long time anyway. You also can't use this for skill switching, which is one of the things that um, I was going to test out. Uh, you know, is there any is there any benefit to using this skill? And then the you could argue that you know you could have adaptation and then get those decoctions on for 80 minutes instead of 40. And if you're using a decoction only build, then skill switch when you do your skill switching, take adaptation off. They'd last twice the amount of time. Except they don't. As soon as you take off the skill. The bonus goes so that does make sense but it also means that it's not really um necessary so you have to consider you've only got 16 slots in total do you really want one of them to be taken up or would you rather just have these for like when you've got more green skills it increases the duration of potions and decoctions anyway so like let's say that these were lasting lasting for an hour or i mean 48 minutes three quarters of an hour is a long time there's not going to be a period in the game where you are unable to just meditate after a fight and reapply them so that is a pure quality of life thing you will never see me apply it in a build it's just a waste of a slot so if you're trying to be optimized you would never use it it's there as a quality of life if you really wanted to so yeah, um, that's everything I wanted to cover in the tree. Um, you've also got Frenzy, but that is uh, quite, it's weird how it triggers. It, it's inconsistent and it's only a level one skill. I don't find it necessary. Much more powerful to have Superior Blizzard and its effects with delayed recovery or even with fast metabolism to just use it in a pinch and have it last for that 12 to 20 seconds or whatever. Um, it will last if you've got quite a few of these skills. And the bombs I will cover separately because they have a lot of their own mechanics and I'm gonna put those in a build. And uh, that's what we wanted to go through. 
so basically an absolutely ton of stuff there if you've watched the whole video and you've stayed with me that's incredible thank you um, and then I'm just going to put a quick bit at the end separate thing about having Hugo there uh, and how you can sell the decoctions so we'll move on to that next Okay, so as discussed, uh, if you complete the Father Knows Worst quest in a certain manner and you save all three of the brothers, you can save Hugo there uh, after talking to the men issuing the contract who turn out to be his brothers. You can save all three brothers and Hugo will come back to the bar that they own in Tucson. And uh, he is the only merchant in the game. So this is Hugo here. You can just see it's just around the corner from the North Guardian Embassy. And Hugo is the only person in the game who can buy everything and he can buy them from you at full price. So he doesn't really have a lot of uh, money available. He only tends to start with uh, 600 coin at any one time, uh, 650 sometimes. But you can sell things to him for full price, and this includes things like crossbow bolts that you normally can't sell anywhere, you can sell them to him. And so one of the things you can do is, instead of dropping the decoctions to destroy them, if you want, you can sell them to Hugo. So you can see that you can sell them there, and um, I have experimented a little bit with meditating for sort of five to ten days uh, for extended periods of time, and the decoctions stay with him for quite a, a length of time. So I couldn't tell you exactly how long, because I've never done it on a full playthrough where you could be coming back to them or not but somebody called Conrad let me uh, know about this reminded me of it in a video so thank you Conrad and uh, basically you can sell all the decoctions to him so if I was to sell these decoctions uh, instead of dropping them because dropping them destroys them uh, then that might be a better alternative so the reason you would do this is as discussed earlier in the video for metamorphosis um, or if you're watching this in a separate short video that I may post go and check out the uh, alchemy anthology video and it'll have details of why you would want to uh, drop or sell these potions. So like the rarer ones like Doppler decoction, uh, you only get one chance to get this in each playthrough. And so instead of dropping it to destroy it, if you just drop it and destroy it, you wouldn't be able to rebuild it because you wouldn't have the Al the mutagen available to you again because you used it to make the first one. Instead, you could sell them to Hugo and uh, then you can just have metamorphosis pick from the actual available decoction so you can effectively choose what metamorphosis picks from and it always activates the same ones and that makes it miles better because then you don't get things like the lesion decoction or things that are not applicable for a, a variety of fights so things like the grave hag decoction it's all right but like you don't want it as one of your main decoctions if you can help it you can instead uh, like basilisk decoctions virtually useless so you can limit what Metamorphosis picks from. So yeah, you can sell things to Hugo and then Metamorphosis will pick from the remaining available options. And I'm sure there are a lot of, uh, you will have the same ideas as me as what you can do with this. Um, can you get multiple of the decoctions? And unfortunately, no, you can't. Um, I mean, it kind of makes sense. But even if you were, because when you sell something to Hugo, you can remake it. So like, there um, and that's why you wouldn't want to drop the Doppler decoction for example because you don't have the mutagen available so if I'd have dropped it instead of selling it to Hugo I wouldn't be able to remake it because I wouldn't have the Doppler decoction again but things that you have sold to him and you therefore don't have in your inventory or things that you've dropped you can remake them so here I do have a fiend mutagen I could make this again um, but I just wanted to reiterate I have gone over as many of the possibilities I can think of <clears throat> and there's only a one other specific use for this that is beneficial you can't um, make multiples of oils you can't make lower varieties of oils and use them with the superior one if even if you have the superior and the enhanced one in your inventory if you use the superior then the enhanced then it just uses the enhanced one so unfortunately you can't double up on oils I tried that you can't double up on potions um, if you make if you make it so that you have the superior and enhanced version of two potions in your inventory if you use one and then the other then it just um, keeps the effects of just one of them it just applies the toxicity again so that is absolutely detrimental other than keeping your superior your delayed recovery of toxicity up and there are better ways of doing that you'd want to use a separate unique potion and have them all active with delayed recovery at the same time and so uh, as we just discussed I have made the fiend decoction there it is if I go to buy it back from Hugo um, you cannot buy it back um, the game stops you from doing it so 
Oh, never mind. We thought we had a, a potential thing to look at there, but it just tells you you don't have enough coin. Whereas there at top left, I have 61,000 coins. So I do have enough. The game stops you from doing it. But they will be there in his inventory. And then in, that means that, you know, um, unless they disappear over time, which again, I can't confirm if they do or not, because I've not been able to test it uh, other than just meditating. Um, I believe they stay in his inventory. And so that's a good way of doing it. You could just have them there instead of them being destroyed quick little thing it does let you double up on bombs and so i'm going to do a separate thing on that um yeah and that'll be a separate video so i'll do that as a short that'll go up at some point as well so that's what you can do with hugo um you can sell him decoctions thank you to comrade for pointing that out and uh yeah useful little thing there so i'll just leave that at the end of the video and uh, that should be the conclusion of that alchemy anthology Alm alchemy almanac whatever i call it so I hope you found that useful. Please do like, comment and subscribe and I hope you find use for that on the path.